Um, according to this uh, quote that was found on uh, the University of Florida International Center, it's a quote from a speech that was made by the 37th President of the United States, Franklin uh, Roosevelt. He said, if civilization is to survive, we must cultivate the science of human relationships. And this means the ability of all peoples of all kinds living together in one world in peace. This statement cannot be more true than at a time like this when uh, our world is gradually becoming a global village with accentuating uh, migration rates. Today, our team will be sharing with you on the need to alter the curricula of uh, U.S. colleges and uh, universities in order to accommodate ever-changing demographics of students. And uh, why is this topic important to us? We are all students here, so the fact that you have, we have in our midst students from all over the world means that it's a direct concern, it's something that impacts us. Uh, secondly, you see our team here is a testament of this diversity. I come from Cameroon in Africa, Jason is from uh, China, and uh, Jared is from the United States. So the fact that we came together to constitute a team like this, to work on a sensitive issue like this, is uh, underscoring the importance of uh, creating uh, conducive environments where students from all over the world can study. And also, I've been, I'm a trained teacher with seven years of teaching experience, so I'm very versed with the, the dynamics of uh, school curricula. Um, how will um, our topic uh, be handled? First of all, I will give you some information on um, how people come into the U.S., the different avenues through which foreigners get in here. And then I will hand over to Jason, who's going to give two examples of how this diversifies our campuses continually. And then he will highlight the obvious challenges that go on on campus. And then hand over to Jared, who's going to give us proposed solutions and urge all of us to take action and also conclude the talk. So permit me give you some brief information in uh, concerning uh, the diversity that we face in the United States. The United States, as we know, is a superpower in the world, a strong economy, and so it attracts people from all over the world. This country welcomes thousands of foreigners each year, and these foreigners come through a variety of visas. If you are a citizen, you are probably not aware of some of those things. You are completely blank but there are this series of visas. So examples of some of them are student visas. I, begin, I believe myself and Jason are here on student visas. And even under that category, you have a variety of them. You've got uh, F1 visa, you've got J1 visa, which exchange student, you've got M, which is vocational, you've got uh, H1B and all of that. There are so, just so many. And there are religious visas. There, there is uh, the permanent uh, resident visa, that one is issued through diversity lottery or other groups, uh, but generally diversity lottery. Through that lottery, 50,000 people get into this country each year on that visa alone. And uh, so these people coming in, they diversify our campus. Some of them come directly as students. Others come here on different visas. Once they get in here, they decide to attend college or university. So our campuses get diversified. Right now, I'm going to turn over to Jason, who's going to give examples of how this diversity exactly occurs and it highlights challenges. So welcome, Jason. An article authored by Peruka featured on the Guardian website in 2010 shows U.S. Remark remains in the global leading destination of immigrants with 43 million foreigners in the U.S. in 2010. According to our article, Yu Chu Zhong and his co-worker published the on immigration information source, there are roughly 1 million international students in the U.S. And it should be considered about those international students usually are not can include immigrants with permanent visas in the U.S. With the influx of the foreigner students in the U.S. colleges, difficulties arise on our campuses. As we know, universities in the U.S. offers all kinds of opportunities for international students. And they do face a lot of challenges. I will highlight a few. Firstly, cultural challenges. Since the other international students arrived in the international airport in the United States, they will be immersed in a different culture rather than they used to at home. The intense feeling of being in adaptability with all kinds of different cultures and different languages will usually let them feel overwhelmed in the first time. 
regardless of where they are, in the restaurant or in the class. To illustrate, I give two examples. First, in China, it is very common people will wear the same clothes in the different locations, in the different occasions. But in America, people usually wear formal dress in the formal occasions, such as in a church or for the job uh, interview, while they wear the sportswear in the fitness center. Second, Chinese people upload, upload uh, modest as one of the main cultures in, in China. But in some of the situations, being over modest were considered about with, with a symbol of uh, hypocrisy, hypocrisy in American culture. Secondly, language barrier is always a line on the path for the international students. As Nelson said, if you talk with a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to a man on his own language, it goes to his heart. So language is very important. Socialization and dealing with daily routines for international students are cause a problem as well as leading to lots of misunderstandings as well. Moreover, in the academic class, being unable to follow the American professors are also cause stress and anxiety for international students. Now Jerry will talk about how to solve those questions, solve those problems. Welcome Jerry. Thank you, Jason. <clears throat> this is a multi-sided issue that cannot be solved easily by one party alone. Both schools and students need to take steps to help those in need. The administration can uh, offer classes in cultural diversity to educate the uh, current populace on different differences in culture. And as new, uh, new students come to class, or come to the school, new classes can be offered. In a paper by Min Zhao, uh, published in Annual Review in 1997, uh, the level of adaptation among young immigrants are uh, generally measured by educational attainment. And it can work in reverse, too. The more you educate people about another culture, the more they might learn about themselves. On the personal side of things, having empathy and caring for those that may be in need can help foster a better environment for everyone, whether it's just stopping saying hello or helping them with the work. Today, we talked about the need to alter curricula for immigrants, and Patrick talked about how we are, as a superpower, receiving many immigrants every day, and about how some of them receive different visas to enter the country. Jason talked about some of the challenges they face, and provided examples about what those challenges may be. And then I talked about a few, just a few of the solutions that might be offered to help them. We have a few words of action for you today. Um, the way that has always been the most efficient in helping people has been through the heart and through in the person. Even if it's just helping somebody find their way around, helping them on Blackboard, or just helping them with a word they might not fully understand. The best way to help somebody is to understand them and not to just kick them out as different. We challenge you to offer your assistance, to say hi, and to introduce yourself if maybe, and if maybe you'll make a friend. As Martin Luther King Jr. put it, if we are to have peace on earth, our loyalties must be ecumenical, not sectional. Our loyalties must transcend our race, our tribe, our class, and our nation. And this means we must develop a world perspective.